Okay, so I have the industrial Frankenstein type looking uh, ceiling lights. So next, we're going over here. Now I've shown this in videos in the past. This actually is a real fuse box. I just put some decals on it and uh, it actually works. That's what powers the house. But uh, when I first moved here, I tried covering up by painting it you know, the same color as the wall and everything and tried to hide it. And now these days, now that I know better, I actually embrace it. And what I intend to do is make it even worse looking uh, by putting in the Frankenstein switch, which will just be a prop, but it'll look cool. I mean, come on, what the hell, you know? That's what all these projects are for, is just to look cool. So I did all this weathering and rust it has this this is the real cable that goes all the way down and what I did is I it had little uh, uh, kind of steeples staples hold it to the wall but I'm gonna cover this and make it look like a heavier gauge cable that uh, of course it'll have to stay in the floor because this is an active wire right here there is a, a power junction on the other side of the wall that goes up to the power pole. So let's uh, let's take care of the situation. So I'm out here out on the porch. It's a fairly nice day outside, so I can do some of this work outside. I've taken uh, this is actually hot water heater, washer and dryer hose, and I've taken it and split it. So this will kind of cover up and camouflage that, that one little scrawny wire. Make it kind of beefed up looking. Give it that industrial look. So I've already done that part. I just I sourced this at Ace Hardware. I tried to find and scavenge something, but I couldn't find anything I could really work with. A real copper cable is like you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So this is going to be a thick faux kind of uh, upgrade. Whenever you're working with electricity, children, wear rubber gloves. These are kind of Dr. Frankenstein-ish type gloves. So, I'm going to start it up here. Just kind of work the cable in there. Now I am going to attach the Frankenstein switch here somewhere. I'm not really decided where I'm going to put it just yet. If I put it over here, I'll lose wall space. If I put it here, it's the same thing. If I put it right here, it might work out better. I don't know. We'll look and see. I'm just going to work this through. See how that's looking so far. So that worked out rather nicely. Now, I'll weather this a little bit. I might need to put in like a little copper washer type thing around that to make it look a little bit more authentic, but a little bit more detailed. But I, I like that a whole lot better now. It just goes into the floor. I may have to get some steeples to mount it. Make it a little bit more flush so you don't come by and hit it because that really is an active wire. It's got a little weight on it now. Yeah, a little bit of pressure there. We don't want to get shocked by just playing around. That's that's how it happens sometimes. If you're just messing around with something. But so far that looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to have so maybe something coming out here. I got some left over that will be let's see, completely fake, false, up next. So this is the switch that I'm going to install. Uh, it is real. I found this in the, uh, 
abandoned warehouse. But I mounted it to this board. Just found the board laying around. Gave it some uh, patina just for the hell of it. So there it is. I'm going to install it. Now it won't be working, of course. It's just a prop. But it does look cool. That's why we do a lot of things here uh, at my channel. We, we do it for aesthetic reasons and it'll add a lot of ambiance to my house, to the place. I think it's important to surround yourself with things like that. Uh, it gives you other ideas. I'm not going to rest until I turn most of my house into looking like that, uh, like that video game environment, that Fallout. I'm like obsessed with that. So anyway, you can see I got all these barrels. I don't know if you ever got radioactive barrels here already. So here we are here, I've got that installed, now there's a stud right about here, right here there's not really as far as I can tell, so I'm going to offset it, I'm going to place it about right about here I think. Okay so I live near an industrial site with a bunch of warehouses and uh, lumber yards and everything in the world, I literally found this piece of wire laying on the ground next to a wall actually just with a bunch of junk just laying around absolutely tossed aside so I'm going to use this but I'm going to paint it to kind of age it a little bit uh, I did find some other wire but it had that old silver asbestos type covering on it I really don't want asbestos in the house it looked cool but that's just too much of a hazard I'm going to very carefully keep working here. Now, there's no reason that won't go up in there. There we go. That's what I was looking for, that snap. Looks like a lot of trouble to go to, doesn't it? Just to do something that's, that's really all just for fun. I know some electrician would look at this and say, what the hell? Now, here's the cool thing too. From what I understand, from what I understand, when you, uh, when you have these, these are called uh, knife switches, uh, a mains switch, I think too. When you go up with it, that is power on. Now, it may not be always that way in movies, but uh, the reason is is so somebody doesn't come by and act if it's if it's off for maintenance or something like that gravity or somebody didn't come by and hit it and then you know not knock it into place so that's always going to be off that's the off position that's engaged right there so it doesn't look too bad uh i may have to distress the wall more to actually to make it match it's so messed up looking over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually uh I take this wall color and I'm going to start painting this right here to make it look like somebody tried to uh, paint it at one point. And then I'm going to remove some of the paint, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. Kind of mess with it. I didn't even prep the surface. I just decided I'll just paint it. If you can think of a better way of doing this, let me know because I'm still kind of new to uh, painting the distressed grunge wall look. It's hard to mess this up really probably. And I am going to uh, secure this down too. So, just add some accents to it.
just got back from the hardware store I needed these grounding straps but they need to be weathered also if they are brand new to match our project so I scuffed them up a little bit to hold some primer I'm going to hit with some primer automotive paint so these are just like dustings So while we're waiting on that stuff to uh, to dry, I'm going to I painted this, remember, and as it turns out, it's dry. I'm going to let's hit it with a rag here and kind of scuff it up a little bit. That painted here a little bit better than I thought that it would. There we go get some of the black back if you've ever been uh, exploring in abandoned buildings you'll always notice that somebody at some point has painted over something several different times different colors I didn't realize how well this would adhere so I'm going to hit it with some sandpaper just a few areas you don't have to go crazy with it there we go just to muck it up a little bit. Go down here some too. So I'm building the ultimate man cave with the uh, Frankenstein switches, you gotta admit, it's just cool as hell. We've reached a whole new level of coolness here. Even though it's a man cave, uh, women really dig this place, actually. And yes, I am single, so I can pretty much do whatever I want to my house. I live by myself, so this is how it is going to look. And that is the end of that. So, but... Interestingly enough, when women do come over, they love this place. And they love the kind of peaceful atmosphere. Uh, you can just kind of lay around and hang out. And it's exciting at the same time. You know, they really love the atmosphere. Everybody likes it. People always remark on it when they come over and look around. The kitsch value is... Uh, pretty extensive. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, just take some some fake rust. I'm going to go over that with some of this gray paint too. Just hit it a little bit with the paint. See the effect there? It's kind of a dry brushing. I believe I'm basically done, at least at this point. I could always add a few things to it, but that is the basic look and the concept. So there's a little bit of everything here. I really like it. This was a really stupid project, an insanely stupid project that I absolutely loved working on. It was great. It didn't really take that long. The only thing that cost money were the uh, brackets 
and this uh, hose here was about $20. Everything else was scavenged, found objects, all the wire and everything else. Amazing what you can do with a little bit of paint and a little bit of uh, fake finishing. But the interesting thing is, is this, this could work with a, uh, all kinds of different uh, environments. You could do like a cyberpunk or a steampunk set. Um, a theme of, let's say, diesel punk, post-apocalyptic maybe even. And also, of course, the uh, retro science fiction, the Frankenstein and things like that, such of the sort, mad scientist, horror movie. I think it's just fun doing that. It's just, it's just great. I just love doing that. So anyway, there it is. So I, I took something that was just basically uh, uh, an ugly bump on the wall and turned it into a work of art. It's wall art for this room. Really adds to it. So there is beauty in horrible looking things sometimes. You got to think too about like, take for instance, H.R. Giger. Uh, he loved the industrial look and machines and, and junk. Uh, one, he, he used to take a camera everywhere that he went. And one time he was in Germany and he saw the back of a garbage truck and he took a picture of it. And uh, from then on, he incorporated that into several pieces of artwork, which was, he was really famous for. He was considered a genius just for that one thing, not just the alien. So yeah, he really liked stuff like that. And he took pictures of things, of uh, wiring, industrial equipment, machines. He was an industrial designer after all. So I'm basically, I'm really determined to, uh, to live inside a horror video game environment. I think it's really well worth it. It's something that I really want to do and I'm going to do it. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.